101 facts. 101 facts never changes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this post-apocalyptic, irradiated version of 101 facts. I'm Sam, and today we venture out of the Vault of Ignorance into the wide world of Fallout. Don't forget your little special book. But, which Fallout weapon actually exists in real life? What horrors lurk within the Fallout world, in secret? And could I have my own tower like Tenpenny? Please? I wouldn't blow anyone else up, I promise. I like that good calms. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so pop into your power armor, dose yourself with Psycho, and let's have a sweet roll party, baby! This is 101 Facts About Fallout. Number one. In case you thought this video was about these guys, this guy, or about a bitchy argument with Karen, it ain't. Nay, Fallout is a critically acclaimed action-adventure horror and eventually FPS game series from various developers starting in the year of 1997, which is the same year that Princess Diana died, although I'm not sure the two are directly related. Number two. In it, you play a, uh, well, you, or whoever you want to be, but in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. The Fallout games are famous for smashing together the aesthetics of future technology and the 1940s and 50s in America. Number three. All Fallout games are therefore set in the good old US of A, but in different places. The games take you to post-nuked Southern California, Washington, Vegas, and Boston. I'm looking forward to the upcoming Norwich version, personally. <laughs> Number four. Now, of course, this is set in a different universe to ours, unless we somehow forgot all the nuclear warfare and cleaned it all up pretty quickly. The history of our world and Fallout was pretty similar up until around the 1940s, when everything changed. Like puberty. Number five. To sum it up quickly, the USSR did not dissolve, China never moved away from communism, and the US was so scared of communism, they split up into 13 commonwealths. The difference between our world and theirs is known to Fallout fans as the Divergence, which has nothing to do with the staggeringly average film series of nearly the same name. Number 6. The politics beyond this aren't really known, but one thing that did apparently happen in 2075 was that a president was impeached for jaywalking. As in, walking across a road. Imagine if it was that easy now. Number 7. Anyway, after this there were a series of wars over resources, including Europe, who squabbled amongst ourselves because we had no one else to fight. The UN also fell apart, Canada was annexed, lots of stuff happened, we'd be here all day if I had to discuss it all. But two things are important here. One, US culture never quite got over the 1950s as a look. But also, B, something called the Great War. Number 8. I'm sure you can guess what happened here, but on October the 23rd, 2077, the world was pulverized with nuclear bombs like several slaps to its earthy face. China and US pummeled the crap out of each other, resulting in the wasteland we tentatively explore today. The war, by the way, only lasted for two hours. Number 9. Anyway, enough of that backstory, Gubbins. Fallout has five games in the main series and three in the way of spin-offs. Those main ones are titled Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, no wait, sorry that would make sense, Fallout New Vegas, and then Fallout 4. Number 10. Those spin-offs I mentioned are Fallout Tactics, Brotherhood of Steel, Fallout, Brotherhood of Steel, wait did I just say that or, oh no wait, it is just confusing, and Fallout Shelter. Tactics was a real-time tactical role-playing game, Brotherhood of Steel was a linear third-person shooter, and Shelter was a mobile app designed to place you in charge of people you eventually have locked underground. A bit like Tinder in that respect, really. Number 11. The first couple of Fallout games were a tad different to the others in a number of different ways. Firstly, they looked like this. Jesus, that guy looks terrifying, but no, sorry, I didn't mean that. I mean actually like this. A proper old-school point-and-click adventure with turn-based combat. They were also developed by Interplay Production, something that will change a bit later on, but don't worry, I won't spoil who di- damn it. Number 12. Fallout introduced a special system, which determines several attributes about your character. Special is an acronym, by the way, standing for Strength, Perception, Endurance, Charisma, Intelligence, Luck, and Agility. Oh no, wait, Agility, then Luck. I'm clearly lacking in that fourth one. <laughs> no, fifth. Damn it. Number 13. Anyway, in the first Fallout, your special self is sent out of your vault because your water chip is broken and it could kill everybody inside. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when that happens. Vaults, by the way, are vast underground structures designed by Fault Tech to house civilians and keep them at the very least alive during the event of a nuclear strike. Number 14. There's 122 vaults across the whole of America, and supposedly they can hold up to 1,000 people for 900 years. They cost around $645 billion to create. Each. Inside the game, that is. That would be a ridiculous cost to make an actual video game. <laughs> oh yes, by the way, I should say, number 15. 
The game Fallout itself took three million dollars to be made. So, nowhere near how much a vault is worth, but I'm not sure how many caps that is. Number 16. As such, because vaults were so expensive, they were commissioned by the government. But like all things sorted by governments and dystopias, the vaults were, in reality, used too for a series of psychological and social experiments. Number 17. These experiments mean that the vaults differ wildly from one another. For instance, Vault 34 had an overstocked armory with no lock, Vault 106 had psychoactive drugs pumped through its air filtration system after 10 days, which in turn rendered most of its inhabitants insane, and Vault 43 had just 20 men, 10 women, and a panther within it. Number 18. There's also the hilariously named Vault 69, which is populated by 999 women and one lucky fella. That is canon, by the way, even if it does only appear to be mentioned in a webcomic. Number 19. Anyway, enough of this vault-based silliness. As you may have guessed, upon leaving these vaults, you need weapons, boyo or girlo. One of the most ridiculous weapons in the series is arguably the Fat Man, which first appears in Fallout 3. The Fat Man fires a mini nuke, causing a frankly ludicrous amount of damage. It's named after the same bomb that fell upon Nagasaki in 1945. Number 20. As ridiculous a weapon as this is, it's based on a real one. In reality, it was called a Davy Crockett after an ex-soldier congressman, and was almost used in the Cold War. As you can see though, it's not exactly an easy thing to carry around in your invisible back pocket, and you might be a little bit wary about dropping a nuke. Number 21. Another such crazy weapon is the Alien Blaster, which is weird, no? As it implies that aliens exist in the Fallout world. Well, yes, they do. In fact, since the very first game, your characters come into contact with various alien ships. The first of these is a random event named Alien Ship, in which you, um, see an alien ship. You can't get in it, but you can take from it said alien blaster and a portrait of Elvis made of velvet. Because, sure, why not? Number 22! There's another random event that's similar to this in the first Fallout involving an alien. A time-travelling British alien at that! It's called Unusual Call Box and shows a blue police box disappearing into thin air. A similar way to a TARDIS would in Doctor Who. <laughs> that would be a bleak, bleak episode. Number 23. You can also meet up with aliens in Fallout 3, which then become its own expansion pack named Mothership Zeta, which is entirely set on a spaceship. <laughs> and Fallout is so cool. You can also find similar aliens and wreckage in Fallout 4. Man, they really do suck at landings, don't they? Number 24. Another thing that appears in many Fallout games is this man, specifically these things on this man, his vocal cords. Ron Perlman's voice appears in the opening of, or otherwise elsewhere within, Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. He's mostly known for his catchphrase, War. War never changes. Even though it actually kind of does. Number 25. You can also meet him in one of the games too. If you use the old console commands during the ending of Fallout New Vegas, you'll find Ron the Narrator, who looks suspiciously similar to Ron Perlman himself. Nice. Number 26. Another, another thing that appears in many a Fallout game is this guy named Harold. Handsome, huh? Harold was a human turned Gaul who mutated while in a vault, except with an additional feature of a tree called Bob growing out of his head, making him look like the ultimate vegan. Number 27. You stumble upon him again in Fallout 3, where Bob has taken him over and turned him fully into a tree. Harold has a cult of people who worship him now, known as the Tree Minders, but poor Harold just wants to die, and so asks you to kill him by burning his heart. Like if you cry every time. Hey, by the way, did you kill Harold or did you let him live in agony? Let me know in the comments below. Number 28. Quite often your left arm must get rather tired during Fallout, and not for any of those naughty reasons for any lefties out there, but because of your Pip-Boy. These devices are jolly handy as they tell you everything you'd want to know, from where you are to how badly you're injured to reminders regarding what the hell you should be doing. If only there was something like that in real life. Ah well. Number 29. They've evolved over the years from the Pip-Boy 2000 to the 3000 Mark IV. My favourite though is the Pimp Boy 3 Billion, as found in New Vegas, which is gold and has diamonds on them too for the baddest wasteland mother of them all. Number 30. This, though, is not a Pip Boy, even though he's so often called it. This chap is named Vault Boy, and he gets furious if you call him Pip Boy. I mean, look at those eyes. Grr. Number 31. Fallout itself was a pretty good gaming success. It sold 150,000 copies by August of 2000 and received some pretty rad X reviews. 
It even received several awards like GameSpot's RPG of the Year Award and ranked five times in PC Gamer's list of the best PC games of all time. Phew. Success radiates off this thing like a... like radiation from a toilet bowl in the game. A positive toilet, though. Yeah. Number 32. 1998's Fallout 2 was a similar story. By May of 2000, it had sold 128,000 copies. And much like its older sister, it had good critical acclaim. Much like this channel, maybe, perhaps. Lol, not really. Number 33. During the launch party for Fallout 2, some journalists would receive a very special gift. Their very own gecko in a can. It contained a plushy gecko, by the way, not actual irradiated remains. Supposedly, they were meant to have a dog plush inside, and it was meant to be called Dog in a Can. But they couldn't find any dog plushies small enough to cram inside them. Number 34. Fallout 2 continues the bold tradition of some extremely random easter eggs and references within its virtual invisible walls. One such easter egg is Crashed Whale in the middle of the desert, which is said to have fallen from a great height along with some daisies. This is a reference to the book The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, in which the improbability drive changes two nukes into a sperm whale and a bowl of petunias. <laughs> it really is a great book, and only very intelligent things reference it all the time. Number 35. There's also an item called Cheesy Poofs, which is a reference to Cartman's favourite snack from South Park. Number 36. Fallout's early fans even appeared in this game in a special encounter. In Fallout 2, you can stumble across some guys called the Unwashed Villagers, who have some pretty odd names if you ask me. I mean, I wouldn't christen my first child Alexander Killer B. Anyway, they're fighting a guy called Grim Reaper. This is a reference to the oldest Fallout online fan community in Fallout history, named the Unwashed Villagers who were plagued by a spammer named Grim Reaper. Not the actual Grim Reaper, this isn't The Sims. Number 37. There's one special encounter that can blow your lid in a bit of a mind F while being a reference to Star Trek at the same time. Ready? This side quest is called Guardian of Forever, in which you stumble across a stone ring. Pass through it and you find yourself in Vault 13 from the first Fallout game. When interacting with the computer, you find that you break a water chip, saying that it has about 100 to 150 days left of usage and you feel good about it. Sound familiar? Well, that's because that's exactly what happens to your character in Fallout 1, which means that you are responsible for the adventure kicking off in Fallout 1 because of the water chip you broke, which past you needs to go out to the wasteland and fix. Number 38. This is actually because the protagonist of the first Fallout is your own grandparent. If they didn't save the vaults, then they wouldn't have had children and you would have never been born. <laughs> Number 39. Oh yeah, sorry, just quickly. This whole debacle is a reference to a Star Trek episode, The City on the Edge of Forever, in which three characters travel back to pre-World War II America through a similar stone ring, and have to fix history before they can return back. Number 40. There's another special encounter too that's mind-boggling in a different way. In it, you stumble across the Cafe of Broken Dreams, which looks exactly like a location from the first game. Within the cafe, you find dead people and companions from the previous game, who talk about what the players did with them. This is a reference to the boulevard of broken dreams where the city sleeps and I'm the only one and now what? Oh no, sorry, not that one. The short story by Harlan Ellison from his compendium Strange Wine, in which the main character sees dead people from his past within a cafe. My shadow's only one that walks beside me. Number 41. What many consider to be Fallout's magnum opus in the main series, Fallout 3, was released a decade later in 2008. It received universal acclaim, according to Metacritic, like my debut album Sam Rhymes did as well. This was the first Fallout game in Bethesda's hands, and I'm sure they were very pleased indeed with their work. The Meaning of Life It won several Game of the Year awards too, from the Golden Joystick Awards to IGN, who gave it a 10- Oh no wait, they didn't, sorry, they gave it a 9.6. Oh wow. Number 43. Fallout 3 was mired in controversy in several different countries upon release, but for different reasons. For instance, Australia wasn't a big fan of the fact you could get addicted to drugs and alcohol within the game. They also didn't like a particular drug in the game called Morphine. Never heard of it. And therefore it was refused a censorship classification. They changed it to Medex instead, which meant they were very happy with the game after that. Maybe. Number 44. India and Japan also had problems with the game too. It was refused a release in India for the Xbox 360 for Brahmin which are mutated bovines that are based on cows that are heavily revered in the Hindu faith. Japan did release the game eventually, but forced to change the Fat Man weapon into a nuclear launcher, so it didn't remind them of the devastating nuclear attack against their country only a few decades earlier. That's fair enough, really. Number 45. You can also go cow tipping within Fallout 3. It truly is that immersive of an experience, honestly. 
If you crouch behind a Brahmin and press activate, they fall down. <laughs> Referring to a myth of pushing sleeping cows over, which is technically impossible. I should know. Daisy was not kind when I tried. Number 46. With a new game came a new targeting system. Gosh, it's like Christmas Day, except with more death. This thing is called the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, or VATS to his friends. Number 47. VATS allows you to target specific body parts just like in the old days, except with a nice first person view this time. It was inspired by the previous Fallout's turn based combat system and allows more detail and strategy in your attacks. Well, sort of. I just tended to turn it on in a panic when I saw a super mutant. Number 48. The sound you make at the end of the VAT turn is the same noise as the end of the combat turn in the original Fallout, even if it does sound like a train door sarcastically shutting in your face. Or maybe I'm just the only one that hears that. Number 49. VATS was also partially inspired by another game completely, Burnout. Burnout's crash mode replays show cars smashing into each other in enough detail to make James Spader salivate. And it was this detail they wanted to transfer into Fallout 3, except onto people and, uh, monsters. Number 5D. There are rumours that VATS was tested on these guys. Well, sort of, in a way. Artist Grant Southers tried out the VATS style by filming his Incredibles action figures and, um, shot them? I mean, how else would you try that out? Number 51. Fallout 3 also had perks in them too, which gave the player specific skills and attributes to give them the edge over the wasteland ghoulies. These perks include Adamantium Skeleton, a reference to old Wolverine's indestructible bones, Cannibal, which means you can get health and negative karma from wolfing down on other people, and Bloody Mess, which gives you more violent death animations. <laughs> Lovely wholesome stuff. Number 52. Special is back in this game too, and can, like in other games, have a massive effect on the game. For instance, if your intelligence is on one, your character will talk like Caveman. Imagine if Sam talked like that and do fact. Ha ha ha. Who know, it may improve views. Not in this algorithm. Ha ha ha. Number 53. As if it couldn't get any more bloody, Fallout 3 apparently nearly had a surgery minigame where you could patch yourself up or revise for an exam if you're training to be a doctor in real life. It was later scrapped as it apparently slowed down gameplay and would probably gross people right out. Number 54. Within the capital wasteland, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to say Fallout 3 is set in Washington, <laughs> silly me, lies the Dunwich Building. The Dunwich Building is creepy AF, but let me tell you why in the next fact, because I just gave you one about the capital wasteland being Washington, sorry. Number 55. Most buildings in Fallout are a bit spooky for sure, but the Dunwich Building hides a secret. Paranormal things occur there, such as barely audible eerie voices, footsteps when nobody else is there, doors opening by themselves, and flashbacks. There's also a huge obelisk in the center which appears to be worshipped, and an altar to an ancient deity in the basement. This is all a reference to the H.P. Lovecraft story The Dunwich Horror, in which swamp folk worship a cosmic deity next to the town of Dunwich. Number 56. Also, you can hear a voice repeating the word including in a garbled audio log. Al this is another reference to Lovecraft, as Abdul al is the author of the book The Necronomicon. Number 57. Not to jump ahead a bit here, but a similar Lovecraftian theme can be found in the Dunwich Borers, which by the way is in Fallout 4. This location also has random noises and creepy flashbacks, and what looks like a face at the very bottom. If you're very cheeky indeed and clip outside the boundaries, you can see an entire statue. The face could be a reference to another Lovecraft story, The Shunned House, in which a huge colossal being lives underneath, uh, well, a house. Number 58. Anyway, back to Fallout 3 and things that are, uh, less creepy. If you fancy a bit of gameception, you can play a text-based adventure called The Reign of Grelock. To access it, simply find the terminal in Hubris Comics. There's no reward for doing it though, except for, uh, sheer satisfaction on your part. Number 59. Fallout 3 is one of the only games this side of Rugrats Search for Reptar in which you can play as a baby. The voice of your baby self is actually the game director Todd Howard's son, Jake. Ah. Number 60. Some game makers like to include secrets that reward the player for finding it in an act of inquisitive curiosity. And while Fallout 3 does that, sometimes it um, decides to go a different route instead. For instance, if you find a weird door by the NN03D SATCOM array, you can open it to find a lovely message thanking you for playing the gay- Oh no, wait, it just says f*** you. Cool. Thanks, Bethesda. Number 61. Another weirdly threatening secret room is a room covered in toilet plunges and bloody handprints on the walls. Nobody knows quite what the hell happened here, but I'm scared to even think about the plunger base mayhem. <laughs> Number 62. The Super Duper Mart is a, let's face it, creepy as hell location in the capital wasteland. 
This was inspired by a power cut that the local area near the studio suffered from, which also affected a nearby supermarket. The staff roamed around the dark mart with just an iPhone light for company, which inspired them rather than scaring them to death. Number 63. Fallout 3 also stars Liam, don't steal my family members, Neeson, as your dad, and no, by the way, he's not my actual dad, even though people say I apparently look like him, which I don't think I do, but it's compliment, thank you. Nintendo 64. Fallout 3 had five DLC expansion packs. Ah, remember when DLC used to actually add more to a game rather than being a separate part of it, which was lopped off like a limb to be sold separately? Good times. Number 65. Speaking of good times, let's take a trip to Vegas, but no, not old-fashioned Vegas, I mean New Vegas, baby! New Vegas was released in 2010 and did well enough to gamble on, by which I mean it got in 300 million dollars. Number 66. It also won a couple of awards too, including the IGN award for most bang for your buck, which was an award I thought they only gave prostitutes, but oh well, well done New Vegas as well. Number 67. They somehow managed to create the whole thing in just 18 months as it was a Bethesda and Obsidian Entertainment collaboration. Some employees from Obsidian were from Black Isle Studios, who made the first couple of Fallout games before becoming about as defunct as Martine McCutcheon. Number 68. Also, Bethesda were going to pay Obsidian staff a bonus if they reached a Metacritic score of 85. Unfortunately though, it got 84. You'd think they'd flip them a bottle cap or two anyway, but no, they refused to pay them any extra. Jesus, that's harsh, Bethesda. Number 69. Power armor. In Fallout New Vegas, you play a courier who's been shot in the head right at the start. It's a very short game. Ha! <laughs> Lol, JK. You recover pretty quickly and have to try and track down the person who tried to have you killed. And let's face it, got it really unlucky. Number 70. Turns out that person is Benny, a guy with a fabulous suit who is voiced by Matthew Perry. Could he be any more morally ambiguous? <laughs> Number 71. Fallout New Vegas gave players a couple of other new playable features too. One of these was Hardcore Mode, which didn't mean you just go skateboarding and swear at pensioners all day, but actually made things a little bit more realistic. Suddenly, ammunition has weight. You also have to be worried about eating and drinking like you're some kind of sim, and nothing heals instantly. I have all those things to worry about in real life already! Well, except for the first one, I do live in Britain after all. Number 72. Rather than having a straight-up karma system in this game, where your actions are classified as straight-up good or bad, New Vegas introduced reputation instead. Yeah, that's right, New Vegas did it before Taylor Swift did. This meant that your actions would affect how certain factions and NPCs in those factions would react to you. This, by the way, was nothing new. It was first used in Fallout 2. Wow, that whole thing was like a rap. I rhymed all of it. Yeah, now I'm feeling on top of this. Oh. Number 73. Another thing that comes from the old Fallout is actually the New California Republic. This faction from New Vegas starts out as Shady Sands, a small community you save in Fallout 1. They eventually got bigger and bigger and more aggressive to match, invading other places with aplomb, eventually becoming the New California Republic. Number 74. Another faction is the Legion, who aren't very nice and have slaves and act all Roman and stuff, although frankly, they look like terrible cosplayers. They're led by Caesar, because of course, but Legion members pronounce it as Kaiser. This is because in Latin, the C's are hard, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Number 75. There's a challenge within the game to beat the character of Mr. House to death using a golf club. Fair enough, I imagine that's hard to do. This is called A Slave Obeys and is a reference to the game Bioshock, in which the main character beats the villain to death with a golf club while he's screaming, A Man Chooses, A Slave Obeys. Number 76. There's a trait your character can adopt in New Vegas known as Wild Wasteland. This trait makes the whole game a bit more fun, frankly, packing it with humorous references and straight-up occurrences like in the first two games of Special Encounters. This was added in as a compromise for the design team as they, much like a banana, were split. Some thought that the game needed more funny and referential content, whereas others thought it would be out of place. Number 77. The Wild Wasteland trait can give you references to Doctor Who, Monty Python, in fact, lots of Monty Python, Indiana Jones, and another crashed spaceship. Number 78. Like the last game, you can use the Fat Man weapon here too. When reloading, you can hear a ding sound, which is actually the sound of the lunch bell at Bethesda's lunchroom. Wait, they have a bell for lunch? Was this made in a school? Number 79. Fallout New Vegas was banned in the United Arab Emirates for being too violent, but then that ban was banned because it wasn't violent enough. What the? Oh, and there's an aneurysm. Number 80. Like other Fallout games, New Vegas allows you to have companions. 
Also like other Fallout games, those companions can be little doggies. Except this time, instead of regular old dog meat, your pooch pal is also cyber. Rex has been around since 2072 and hates hats. And is a good doggy too. Number 81. After New Vegas came number 4, of course, with Fallout 4. Fallout 4 was released in 2015, only a few months after it was announced, making gamers all around the world literally wet their knickers with excitement. Number 82. It's safe to say those wet knickers weren't exactly dried anytime soon, as everybody loved the damn game. 12 million units were sold within 24 hours, with 1.2 million copies extra being sold on Steam in its first day too. Number 83. This brought a number of revolutionary changes to the 4 too, including voice protagonists and a character that could say your actual name. What? We are living in the future! Yes, your old robo-butler, Cogsworth, can say over 1,000 names. These range from common names like f sexy and t to more vulgar ones like Zoe, Donald and Logan. Ah, I think I got those two mixed up, didn't I? Number 84. You can also build your own basis Sim City style. Ish. Seriously, people have lost hours doing this. Be careful, it's like a creative disease. Number 85. You can also mod your weapons with over 700 available mods for you to pimp your murder stick with. I, for example, have a dagger with a laser pointed scope. Bada. Number 86. Another change is that this time, that is different too. This time, it's not a complete standstill, but rather slow motion, like a particularly artistic music video. Number 87. Some extra special versions of the game were released with a real-life Pip-Boy. Well, as long as you have a smartphone anyway. Here's my actual arm wearing one with a terrible filter on it. Don't blame me, it was two years ago. You can also have the same effect if you just duct tape the phone to your wrist too, but this looks cooler, right? Number 88. You can also change the colour of your light on the Pip-Boy and play video games on it too. Yes, that's right, more video gameception. Phew, phew. Number 89. As if the wasteland isn't enticing enough for you and you want to plunge a little deeper within it, a virtual reality version of Fallout 4 is said to be released at some point. Well, anyway, it looks good though, huh? If you want to send me one for free, Bethesda, go ahead. Number 90. You can also be intimate with a, um, robot with a brain in a jar in Fallout 4. Gilda Brosco is the lucky lady we're talking about here. And if you put in the charismatic groundwork, the screen fades to black and you wake up with a lover's embrace effect. This is notable for only being the case if you've had relations with that person. What a beautiful future we have ahead of us. Number 91. You also have the opportunity to help out a serial killer, although you won't really know you've done that until you've done that, if that makes sense. In a building named Pickman's Gallery, which is home to an awful amount of rouge paintings. These are painted by Pickman in the blood of his victims. In his gallery, you find and save a man who is being attacked. Being a good guy or girl, you save him, of course. Only for you to realise later on, you've saved the serial killer himself. Number 92. Also, this is yet another reference to Lovecraft. His name is a reference to the character Robert Upton Pickman in the story Pickman's Model about a crazed artist. Number 93. This game also has swans, apparently. <laughs> oh, what a lovely, beautiful bird. Oh my god, what the f*** is that? That, Sam, is Edward Swan. He was a criminal who volunteered for genetic experiments in exchange for less jail time. He was injected with FEV, or forced evolutionary virus, which rendered him barely able to speak and, well, he looks like that. And he's almost impossible to beat, so good luck with that. Um, thanks, Jamie from All Time Gaming. Number 94. A character from Fallout 3 does actually appear in Fallout 4, although you wouldn't notice it really without knowing your onions Fallout-wise. McCready is a mercenary that can be recruited as a follower, but we've seen him before as the mayor of Little Lamplight, a community of little kids. Number 95. There have been a couple of DLC expansions for Fallout 4 so far, Far Harbor and Nuka World. Nuka World is themed all around a theme park, funny enough, which sounds like a lovely fun day out for all the fun- <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's a murdery mess. Number 96. In the fun house, you can find a horrible recreation of the opening of the game of you with your spouse looking at your baby in a cot. Even though it's impossible for someone to have watched you since then, it's still creepy as balls, huh? Number 97. Also in Nuka World, you can find a bonfire with a sword in it. This isn't only a very impractical and dangerous lighting feature, but a reference to the much sought after saving point in the Dark Souls series. Number 98. One Redditor known as NoogeXLVII posted about his brother Evan's tragic death on the Fallout 4 subreddit. Somebody at Bethesda obviously saw this and created a peaceful area with a character named Evan as a tribute to him. Number 99. This game also has a doggy companion in the form of dog meat again. 
But one fan named Seven Iger modded dog meat to look like his very own dog in real life. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what modding was made for, truly. Number 100. 100. Apparently, there's a crossover between those who are fans of Fallout and those who like. um. adult entertainment online. Venture Beats reported that an anonymous adult website on the day of Fallout 4's release said that their traffic wilted by 10% as many of the people do themselves after spending 20 minutes on such a site. Number 101! If you go to Diamond City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty, specifically on Christmas Day, the locals there will change accordingly. There will be a Christmas tree, decorations, and some of the locals would even say ho ho f***ing ho. Ah, oh, it's a lovely Fallout Christmas, and in December too we've done this video, how lovely. Hey. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments below. And what the hell do you want me to do next? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, though, watch these few videos here. They're sure to whet your little appetite and you'll love them. <laughs> anyway, see you next time. Goodbye.